Okay, let's start out by looking at the intrinsic conducting system and talking about, you know, what's going on here and what do we need to really pay attention to. Now, obviously, it's best if you watch the video first. Okay, on the first screen, what we see is that they, they talk about the intrinsic conducting system, which it's a system within the heart, part of the cardiovascular system of the body. All right, but... What we want to really uh, key on, on is what does it do? Well, it actually sets the rhythm of the heart. And whereas other muscle cells in the body, such as skeletal muscle or smooth muscle, have to have neural input before they will contract, the intrinsic conducting system acts as the method to actually generate the contractions in the muscles. So it's kind of like the, the, the heart's own electrical system, internal electrical system. Now the heart still has nerves that run to it and it can still speed it up or slow it down, but it has the ability to beat without the nervous system simply because of this intrinsic conducting system. So to understand that, then we need to understand a couple of things. We have two basic types of cells that we're gonna be referring to we have the autorhythmic cardiac cells, and then we have the contractile cells. So the contractile cells um, are going to be the just the regular cardiac muscle cells, which of course make up about 99% of the heart cells. But that 1% or so of cells that actually causes the heart contraction are the cells that make up the conducting system, and they're called the autorhythmic cells. And so what they're going to do is there we learned what a neural action potential is now we're going to talk about it's the cardiac uh the autorhythmic cardiac cells that actually uh initiate and send an, a cardiac action potential throughout the heart so let's see what that means okay so what we're going to need to do is our goals are again to understand the parts of the intrinsic conducting system to uh understand what it's doing and that it's actually sending the signal through the heart that spread to the muscles to cause them to contract and then see most of us have heard of an EKG or an ECG and see what the EKG or ECG is actually what is it actually monitoring and what it's monitoring are the different parts of this intrinsic conducting system and that electrical signal that it's sending okay so we need to start understanding heart anatomy which we're going to be talking about in lab these first labs and then finally well we should remember what an action potential was uh, we talked about that last semester that was actually a nerve impulse that is depolarization followed by repolarization and remember depolarization is always uh, positive ions rushing into a cell and changing the resting membrane potential to a more positive direction and repolarization was positive ions leaving the cell, and it's primarily potassium ions that do that, that causes this inside of the cell to become, uh, the millivoltage to become negative again. Okay, so we need to kind of keep that in mind because we're going to be dealing with the same type of thing as we talk about the cardiac action potential. Okay, so now we actually see the actual parts of the intrinsic conducting system starting with the thing that basically initiates all the signals. All the signals start here in the sinoatrial node, or better known as the SA node. We see that we have pathways running from the SA node to the next node, the AV node. These pathways are called internodal pathways. Inter means between, and of course it's between the SA node and the AV node, AV being atrioventricular node. Okay. Um, uh, there's a real important factor that happens here, a slowing down of the signal. We'll be talking a little bit about more about that later. Then we have an area called the AV bundle. So the AV bundle is actually the connection between the upper part of the heart and the lower part of the heart. This is where the signal literally passes from the upper, the atrial areas, to the ventricular areas. And it's important that the signal travel this pathway and not jump from the top to the bottom from the auricles to the ventricles, we don't want them just to jump at any time. If that happens, that would create different conditions. Probably the best one being fibrillations, where the heart quivers and contracts at areas and times when it's not supposed to. So we want the signal to travel a specific pathway. So this AV bundle is the connection running through the coronary sulcus, which is the groove that separates the top part of the heart from the bottom part of the heart. 
Okay, now the AV bundle then branches into two branches called bundle branches in the interventricular septum, that area that separates this chamber from this chamber, the right ventricle from the left ventricle. So that bundle, those bundle branches run down the septum, and notice they've got some offshoots here. And then the 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 branches when they when they branch into the right to the right and left bundle branch, the the left bundle branch runs out to the apex and then fans up in the myocardial area of the left ventricle. The right branch then also fans up into the smaller uh, area, which is going to, of course the right myo cardial area is much thinner than the left myocardial area, but our branches have to go up into both of them because they're going to generate and send the signal that after it spreads through the branches also spreads through the muscles within the heart. Notice, if you will, as the signal though is moving down this uh, through the bundle branches towards the apex and then back up the sides of the ventricles, Notice there's a branch to this area and a branch to this area. And these branches actually go to the papillary muscles, which are the cone-shaped muscles that have the chordae tendineae attached to them. Okay, I'm going to play a little bit from the video. Watch as the signal passes from one area to the next. SA node initiates the depolarization impulse, which, in turn, generates an action potential that spreads throughout the atria to the AV node. Here, the impulse is delayed briefly before continuing onto the ventricles through the AV bundle, bundle branches, and Purkinje fibers. Action potentials, which spread from the autorhythmic cells to the contractile cells, are electrical events. The subsequent contraction of the contractile cells is a mechanical event that causes a heartbeat. Okay, so this is extremely important that you get this point right here. The action potential is what we're actually seeing occur here, okay? And of course, we know that's depolarization followed by repolarization. Even though in the heart, there's another step we're going to add into it, okay? But in this situation, what we're seeing is that the action potential is spreading from the autorhythmic cells here and what we're measuring on that is an electrical event so this thing as it lights up going from here to here is an electrical event we're literally allowing ion movement okay but what that triggers and what happens after the depolarization is the mechanical event and the mechanical event is actually the contraction so we have the signal move from here to here that's the electrical event then we have a contraction of that area. That's a mechanical event. We have a delay of that signal here at that point. Okay. Now, then the signal moves from there down and up. That's the electrical event. And then we have the contraction, the mechanical event. And of course, we send the signal so we can have the contraction. The contraction makes the chamber smaller, which means we're squeezing blood out of the chambers through the rest of the heart or into the blood vessels that's feeding the heart. Okay, next let's see how what we just talked about is monitored or, or recorded by an ECG wave tracing. In this animation, we see heart electrical activity reflected in an ECG wave tracing. The P wave represents atrial depolarization. The QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization. And the T wave represents ventricular repolarization. Please note that in a normal ECG wave tracing, atrial repolarization is hidden by the QRS complex. Okay, very, very important. Let's, let's look at these parts again real quick. So notice the first thing we're measuring is atrial depolarization. So when that signal is moving from the SA node to the AV node, that is the trace of it right there. That is the P wave. Well, depolarization, and this is very important you get what I'm about to say, depolarization leads to contraction. So atrial depolarization leads to atrial contraction, okay? Repolarization leads to relaxation, all right? Now, we'll come back to atrial relaxation here in a second. 
because obviously if something contracts, we want it to relax after it contracts. And usually the relaxation stage is much longer than the contraction stage. Okay, now look, the QRS is a is is basically the monitoring of the electrical signal of the signal when it's moving down the from the SA, or excuse me, from the AV node down the bundle branches and up to Purkinje fibers. That we that's a big event, so that's a big signal. That was ventricular depolarization. So ventricular depolarization has to occur to cause ventricular contraction. Now, this T wave right here is ventricular repolarization when potassium is leaving the cells. And so we can monitor that that graph of potassium leaving the cells. But what you need to understand is repolarization happens before relaxation and it triggers relaxation. So if if from here to here is, is, is ventricular depolarization, then we know that ventricular contraction is going to occur. Next, we have ventricular repolarization, which occurs so that ventricular relaxation can occur. So now I've got atrial depolarization shown by this. I got ventricular depolarization shown by this. I have ventricular repolarization shown by that. So what are we missing? Well, what we're missing is atrial repolarization. We're not really missing it, but it's a fairly small event compared to this event. Now notice how this repolarization is smaller than the depolarization that happened before it. So we know that if that's our depolarization, we know our repolarization is going to be a smaller event. It occurs during this time period, but it is being hidden by this bigger event. So atrial repolarization is, it happens during the QRS complex, but the QRX complex is showing ventricular depolarization. So it is a hidden event, but it is occurring during this time period. Okay, look at the comparison between the heart and the and the EKG or ECG and see if you can uh, you, see if you can kind of tell what one how one is related to the other. These diagrams show the correlation between heart electrical activity and an ECG wave tracing. The P wave represents atrial depolarization, which is followed by atrial contraction. The QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization, which is followed by ventricular contraction. And the T wave represents ventricular repolarization, which is followed by ventricular relaxation. Okay, so notice we have the signal, then signal, then contraction, signal, then contraction. Okay, all right, so again, after the contraction, then we have relaxation. So depolarization leads to contraction, repolarization leads to relaxation. Okay, so we need to know all the parts of the intrinsic conducting system. We need to know basically what it means for the action potential to spread and that that's an electrical event triggering a mechanical event that we call contraction. And we need to understand how the ECG wave tracing records that event and, and then how depolarization leads to contraction and repolarization leads to relaxation.